Hey everyone, I am at the World Finals right now, and I am here with a pro player who is also at the World Finals, but is not competing at the World Finals. It's Busio wearing a 100 Thieves uh, hoodie, which is very strange given what we're going to be discussing in this interview. Uh, yeah, so first off, we won't release this until uh, I think news is broken, but uh, what's going on with you in the offseason? What, what has transpired? Where are you headed? Well... The offseason's been pretty crazy, like, I actually had a surprising amount of teams talking to me, so that's pretty nice to have a lot of options. But um, this is like my first offseason, actually, not even just as an LCS player, just academy, just first, like, real free agency ever. So, like, I know stuff is crazy, but I didn't expect it to be like this. Like, let's say I had, like, six teams talking to me, then, like, two days pass, and, like, so many things have changed. Um, but ultimately, I have a ver verbal agreement with FlyQuest, so, yeah, that's who I'll be playing for. As we record this, and if not, this is going to be very awkward uh, because I'll just release it anyway and something will have gone terribly wrong in the last couple of days. Uh, but uh, so why did you end up with FlyQuest? Um, well, they've just a very exciting roster and honestly something that I think suits me well. Like Bippo is very open minded um, and kind of more forward thinking with how he plays, how he picks. So I really appreciate that part about him. And uh, I feel like that suits me pretty well because... Obviously, I can play the standard, but um, the standard is what Core has been playing for five plus, I don't know how many years he's been playing, but like it's just hard to compete or harder when I'm doing the same old that people have been doing for way longer than me, but being just a bit more innovative, obviously with a balance, because you don't, don't just want to be innovating just to innovate. Um, and then in the jungle, like Inspired, I think is, from my view, like the best jungler in the region, just because... He's a carry jungler, but is also very smart when he plays utility. Because a lot of junglers are very like carry, carry, carry. They play solo queue, nidly, least and only carry, carry, carry. And then they just don't really have the same like overall team fight game understanding that from my view Inspired has. So super excited to play with him. And of course, um, the community perception of him is just as high. So that's very cool. And then um, mid lane, Jensen, I think just fits this team pretty well because we have a lot of crazy things going on already in the roster and I just know him as the stable mid laner always holds his own very well super consistent doesn't make mistakes uh, except on Echo in game five but uh, yeah and then bot lane Masu that's like that's a pairing I'm excited about because obviously in the offseason I had options between like having a more veteran ADC as most people are veteran compared to me um, but like Masu, I watched some of his academy games. He's a highlight player. He plays some weird picks, but he also plays his standard picks very well. Uh, so just excited to play with him. And um, honestly, like the relationship that I had with Doublelift last year of like him teaching me how to play the game at a high level. Obviously, like I appreciate him for everything. But for me personally, like I think I'll play better when I'm more of the leader in the bot lane. Um, not like anything not talking down on double lift because that's like I think I could work on myself just make the relationship more 50 50 but um, yeah just excited to play with Masu and kind of be that leader and I think he's just mechanically amazing so you're, you're excited for the roles to swap where you get to yeah. be the more veteran player in the bot lane yes yeah okay um, so uh, I do want to talk to you a little bit about finals here in a second but before we get to that what this was really your first uh, off season and free agency? Well, not free agency, but uh, agency period. Whatever you want to say. Yeah. Um, since entering the league, what was it like going through it for the first time? Because I think a lot of fans only sort of see when stuff starts getting reported or when you know uh, official announcements are out. Yeah. Well, Hundred Thieves let me explore options. I think the uh, October first, so they gave me a lot of time. I'm very grateful for that. And um, basically, it starts like very very slow. Um, like my agent would reach out to teams but like on October 1st like teams don't really have any final or even close to final things just kind of loosely uh, yeah we'll look into it blah 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 and then it, I'm like just chilling at my house in the off season with my parents and like nothing's happening for weeks and weeks and then like suddenly I, I guess it's probably when some of the NA teams get eliminated at Worlds yeah. stuff picks up so fast and it's just like I have calls every day I'm getting interviewed uh, it's very exciting, but very hectic for sure. 
Uh, what was was there anything in particular that surprised you about this offseason? You said you were surprised at the amount of teams that were giving you offers. Uh, so I don't know if you can elaborate at least on that. Um, well, yeah, I thought like personally, I think I'm I have good potential, but I don't think I showed it that much. So I was just very surprised. So many teams were high on me. So that just felt pretty good. And um, yeah, just having more options means I can get what I want. Yeah. Was there anything else that surprised you or that you thought was crazy about the off season? Um, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that I can't say, obviously. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, there's probably nothing I can say, really. Well, well, maybe someday you'll be able to tell us a little bit about it. Here, let me poke a little bit more on that, though. What, what, uh, what do you think of sort of the conversations going on? Because obviously I hear a lot, other people hear a lot about the salaries going down a lot in the league and players getting paid less on average. Is that something that you think is going to be true going into next year? Well, from talking to teams, many teams make it sound like that, and it's probably true, but probably teams like overplay it when they're talking to you because it's like good it's a good narrative for them to push of course there's definitely truth to it yeah. um but yeah i mean i don't have the whole database with all the contracts so i can't give something that's credible but from my experiences it's probably go gone down compared to like three years ago when everybody was on like super juicers perma yeah. but um it's not like horrible or anything it's still a lot of money to play league of legends professionally so it's still great you're still vibing I'm still vibing, yeah. Uh, all right, let's talk a little bit about finals because there's a giant stage behind us. I'm probably getting DMCA'd on this video for the music that's blaring. Uh, but what, what's it like for you to be at this? Uh, we were talking about this. This is not your first finals. Yeah, I was actually at season three world finals in LA with my dad when I was like, I don't know, nine or 10. Yeah. 10 years ago, yeah. But don't say it like that. Yes. Um, hey, listen, if I have to feel it, you have to feel it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I don't know. It's just very cool because I imagine this place is going to be absolutely packed. The energy is going to be something else. And I don't know, probably watching other people play yeah. just is like way more motivation to like, yeah, I want to I wanna be at LCS finals and have something like this. This is amazing. Or world finals, you know? Yes. Well, we might be really good. Yes. So the fun thing is 10 years ago when you got to go to finals, you watched... Faker and T1 play on stage. Ten years later, you're here in Korea getting to watch Faker and T1 play again. You were telling me you had like a picture of this. I do have a picture. It's me standing in a Ramis or Teemo hat with my dad and Faker in the background in Pick and Ban, I think. It's, yeah. it's pretty iconic. Yeah. Are you, did you bring back the, the hat to try to recreate the photo here? No, I don't have a hat, but there were some like BMO hats or something that I need to buy or like some real life emotes, yeah. you know, like mid game, just put up a happy B. Yeah. That, it's going to be good. I mean, can you, for the fans who can't make it here, as as a fan yourself, what is the experience like? Maybe you can tell them a little bit about what the arena feels like and sort of the scope of it all. Um, it's just massive. I don't know. Very massive. Uh, lights are cool. I mean, it's not like packed yet, so I can't really describe the energy, but definitely it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Uh, for me... <laughs> So we have, we're taking up a, a walkway, unfortunately, so we should probably wind down soon. But for me, I just think every time I come out, it's so cool because whenever you're watching on stream or whatever, you, you get one type of experience. But whenever you're here and you see, like, the scale of the, uh, the stage and everything, you just realize, like, how absolutely massive this actually is. So uh, anyway, I don't want to hold you up for too much longer. Is there anything you want to say to any of the fans out there? Well, appreciate you guys for supporting me on 100 Thieves, and I hope you guys can continue to support me on FlyQuest. Thank you so much for the interview. For everyone else, you can check out the rest of my coverage of all things Worlds right here on my YouTube channel. Thanks so much for watching that piece of content, whether it's an interview or something else. I couldn't be here at Worlds without you because I don't have a sponsor. Uh, so literally, I couldn't be here without you because if you didn't watch it, I would have no reason to be over here other than for my own enjoyment. And then I wouldn't be making content. I'd probably just not be uploading stuff into the void. So uh, if you have any interest in supporting this content, uh, you can click the link in the description below. There's a link tree there with a bunch of different ways to support me. Uh, and maybe if you don't want to do so financially or you can't, uh, you can watch another video on the channel. You can subscribe. You can follow me on Instagram or one of these other platforms so that whenever I go to sponsors, I have bigger numbers. They like big numbers. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Catch you later.